Over the last year of running Women Emerging from Isolation, I have met so many women who, all over the world, who are what I would describe as conveners of women in the civic space. They, they convene women. They, they do it in cities, they do it in villages, they do it in communities across the world. They persuade women to come out of their buildings and into the square. Um, they help women, they persuade women, they support women, they encourage women to move into the civic space. And, and they need to. Um, it's important that women are in the civic space. One of the films did um, a number of months ago was with a, a complete expert, a woman who's a complete expert on water in the world. And she was talking to me about the fact that it, the world over, women, women carry water. They carry water on huge pots, huge back-breaking, heavy pots, back-breaking jobs, moving water. And um, they do it for long, long periods. But when a moment comes in their village where, where there's a possibility of piping water to their village and people get together to, to plan it, to make it happen, to even implement it, the meeting is only with men. <laughs> The women are completely absent. The women who've been doing this brat baking work, who know where the water holes are, um, are not in the civic space. They're not there producing the plans and, and, and making sure that the water gets there more easily. We need women in the civic space. We need women badly in the civic space. So over the last year, I've met, you know, I've met Fatima in Brussels, who, who has convened so many women in Brussels across so many different communities. Um, at the moment, her latest idea is to rename all the streets of Brussels after women, because after all, if all the men's uh, names are used to, 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 to name a street, by definition, the civic space becomes a male space. Um, or Camilla in Rio, who, who used to work in the environment, now works in City Hall and is bringing women in so that City Hall listens and hears women and is developing materials to help women's voice be clearer, heard, and is happy to share all that material. And Mbaya, who, who, who knows how important it is that there's connection between village women and city women in the civic space because they can, they can empower each other. After all, there's there's very few women in the civic space in 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 cities whose roots are not in villages. And Utara, the wonderful Utara, my partner in this project right from the start, Utara, who's worked in villages in India for so many years. Um, and developed extraordinary materials on, on, on financial inclusion of women. So we're very determined to create a community of women who are conveners of women in the civic space. The civic space, well, I suppose I'm one of them too, actually, you know? Um, I think this journey has made me realize to what an extent I am a convener of women in the civic space. I've spent 30 years trying to persuade people to come into the civic space. Um, and now, I've completely focused on women being in the civic space. The civic space to me, I can sort of physically, I can feel it, I can smell it, I can see it, I can hold it. And, you know, every time Com Purpose has operated in a new place, I'm always fascinated by the civic space in that place. Um, I can see it, it's a sort of flat area in the middle of a city or a village that's that's almost, well, it's surrounded by buildings, buildings, um, offices, buildings, homes, play, build, buildings that are places of communities. And you try and persuade people to come out into the civic space. Um, why? Because in the civic space, you have ideas. In the civic space, 
you make things happen. You meet other people who can help you or you can help them to make things happen. And in the civic space, you can ask difficult questions of people in power. Um, the civic space to me is a sort of flat space. You, you don't persuade people to come into it because it's fun or joyful or... <laughs> you, you persuade them to come in because that's what you've got to do. Um, you know, the, the, the space is flat. Um, there's nowhere to hide in it. Um, absolutely nowhere. When you come out into the civic space, it's flat. And when you look up, um, or look into the houses. You you see people looking out the windows saying, well, what's she doing out there? Well, why is she wasting her time out there? By what right is she out there? Uh, she should come back into this building. And, um, but she mustn't, she won't. We have to convene women in the civic space. Um, of course you go back sometimes, you know, you get pregnant. So you've got to go back into the building, then you come back out into the civic space afterwards for the, for the sake of the baby. Um, or, or you get a new job and you've got to focus on that job. So you go back into the building, but then you come back out into the civic space. And for me, the civic spaces that are the most grim are the ones that sort of scream. They scream, they howl in their silence because there is nobody in the civic space. Then there are other civic spaces where there's one voice, one voice that 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 dominates, and 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 you only hear that one voice. And then there are other civic spaces where you've got two clashing voices, two clashing groups playing out the their anger with each other in the civic space, and nobody else can be heard in their arguments. And then you've got, and then. I love the civic spaces that are messy and complex and everybody's in it and and no one would ever agree on everything, on anything. But there's an energy, there's an innovation happening in that space with lots of people coming out from their buildings into it. But one of the really grim versions of the civic space is a civic space with only men, where the women haven't come out to talk about the water and figure out how to pipe the water. Um, it's not that we don't want men in the civic space, we want masses of men in the civic space, but we don't just want men in the civic space, we want women in the civic space as well. And this is why um, Utara and Fatima and Mbayo and Camilla and I have decided to create We Convene. Um, it's a subgroup of women emerging from isolation. It's not for all the women involved in women emerging from isolation. It's for those of you who've chosen to convene, chosen to be conveners of women, to go into the buildings and persuade and help women to come out into the civic space. Um, it's a community, it's a community of people <laughs> who are very, very, very busy. We are all very busy, we conveners. So it's not a huge time commitment. Occasionally, pretty regularly, for short periods, we'll meet um, to steal each other's ideas, to share ideas, to, to share materials, to share insights, to help each other on what can be sometimes a pretty lonely journey, um, sometimes quite a frightening journey. Um, as you look up at those people looking out at you, wondering why you're in the civic space, this flat space with nowhere to hide. Um, but it's a, it's a community, so we'll figure out how it works. Um, this week, every day, over the whole week, we'll um, put up a short film of a woman who convenes. And at the end of it, um, I hope that if you're a convener of women, you'll choose to join us. Lots of women who are conveners of other women in the civic space are joining We Convene already. Um, no pressure, no payment, just friendship. Um, if you'd like to join us, send a message 
to on LinkedIn to Utara or I, Julia, just telling us under, in under 50 words why you are a woman who convenes other women in the civic space. And, and if you'd rather find out more first, then join one of our um, sessions, which is on the third Wednesday of every month. Delighted to welcome you.